We're joined now by Zach Goldsmith, who uh, is the government spokesman on illegal wildlife trade. And alongside him this morning, the CEO of the World Wildlife Fund in the UK, Tanya Steele, who says the government needs to spend more money if it wants to stamp out poaching. Um, Zach Goldsmith, you are spending money, I think £26 million. Yes. Pounds. Yeah. Um, why are we spending £26 million pounds to tackle this over there? Well, first of all, we're seeing contributions from a lot of different countries. We actually spend less on nature, broadly speaking, than, say, Germany or even the United States. So I, I would agree with Tiny, we need to spend more. Um, but this is not, it's not just an African issue. You heard about rhinos, you heard about elephants. A, a third of South America's parrots are on the brink of extinction because of the illegal pet trade. And that £17 billion figure relates to wildlife. If you add mm -hmm. f illegal forestry and if you add illegal fishing, that number gets closer to a billion pounds. And it's, it's not just a biodiversity issue. When you plunder the natural world, you plunge whole communities into desperate poverty. And a lot of that money ends up with some of the world's most vicious organisations. Al-Shabaab, for example, derives its income from mm. the ivory trade. Uh, Boko so Haram as well in Nigeria. Of, there's a long link there's then a to link. A, a terror threat, a, which a, it's then directly impacts It's as us. much a human problem as a biodiversity problem, and that human problem affects us here as well. Of course, it destabilises the yeah. world. So, look, Tanya, those, those pictures are undoubtedly stunning for us to wake up this morning. That's what Jonathan's looking at. It's what's happening over there. But this £26 million that the government is uh, pledging doesn't go far enough for you, and it's just a mere drop in the ocean. I think it's a start, and it's a really important start, but we've got this two-day conference, and we're hoping that there'll be more pledges and that this isn't just a one-off, one-year pledge either. Because um, life on Earth is fast disappearing. We heard some of the statistics this morning. It, more elephants are being killed for their ivory than are being born every single day. Mm -hmm. uh, we see lesser-known species like pangolins, ones taken every five minutes. As What's a mother, a pangolin is a, a gorgeous little anteater that rolls itself up, but it's a huge delicacy in, in parts of Asia, whether for food or for meat. But as a mother, I'd hate the idea of sitting with my son and opening the Tiger Came for Tea book and actually pointing out that all those tigers are gone and they're extinct now like the dinosaurs. What is the argument, um, in your eyes, against allowing these communities to allow big game hunting on a sort of licensed level so that they can benefit from something that clearly people are doing anyway, uh, earn money themselves, put that back into their communities. Um, Prince William, of course, is, is behind, you know, this initiative. Just a reminder of what he said about that in March two years ago. The money that goes from shooting a very old, infirm animal um, goes back into the protection of the other species. If somebody out there wants to pay that money, and it wouldn't be me, but if somebody did, then as long as that money goes back into protection of the species, then it is a, a justifiable means of conserving um, species that are under serious threat. Is it justifiable? I think there are select cases where science and really good tracking and governance has shown that that can work and it does protect species. But as we've heard from Zach, this is the fourth biggest illegal trade globally. Mm. And we don't have that governance, we don't have that kind of tracking. And what we're finding is actually how this can be used in a way where in the past it's allowed in countries to actually mask a much deeper and a much crueler trade in terms of the, quite literally the scale of whether it's ivory, we're now seeing this on lion's teeth, whether it's pangolins, but whether it's tigers. Is governance, yeah. how, does, how does this money change that? This is just an injection, you know, of not enough cash, apparently. Yeah. How do you change the whole system? First of all, I want to say that we've got over 80 countries coming here today, and a lot of those countries are not coming here to get money or to be told what to do by the UK. A lot of them are coming here with really quite exciting plans. We've got the president of Gabon, for example, Ali Bongo, who I think is a world champion on conservation. I think he's doing more than almost anyone else in the world to protect what is a Garden of Eden. In Gabon, one of the most biodiverse, rich areas on Earth. So we're going to be learning from a lot of other countries as well. But the money that we contribute alongside military expertise in places like uh, Malawi, in places like Gabon, mm -hmm. 
collectively, it is about governance. It's about helping communities to, uh, develop alternative livelihoods. Mm. It's about judicial capacity in countries where there isn't enough capacity to prosecute uh, the criminals. It's, it's the whole range of activities. And I, I think I, th we don't put enough money into this, in my view, out of our, our gigantic £15 billion a year aid budget. We could do more. Mm. But I think the UK, nevertheless, is a world leader. We've convened the world to talk about this issue, as yeah. we did four years ago, I, uh, for the first time, putting it to the very top of the political and agenda, and that's people, important.